bones of upper limb uh, we are going to take just a glance of all the bones of upper limb we are considering sternum here for convenience yeah it is not a bone of upper limb you should know it has three parts manubrium body and lower down is zygoid process it possesses facets for the articulation of 12 ribs the one i'm drawing now was clavicle its medial end articulates with the sternum and the lateral end articulates with acromion process of scapula and beneath you have one more process coronoid process and the concave facet glenoid cavity what articulates with the glenoid cavity is our head of humerus to form shoulder joint the lower end of the humerus forms elbow joint by articulating with two forearm bones they are radius which is present laterally and the medial bone is ulna so the elbow joint is formed by three bones lower end of humerus upper end of radius and upper end of ulna now these small bones are called corpal bones which articulates only with the radius to form radio corpal joint otherwise called wrist joint they are eight in number and these corpal bones articulates with five metacarpals they are short long bones and these five metacarpals articulates with smaller bones called as phalanges you should know there are only two phalanges in thumb and three in rest of the four fingers now uh, you know we have 206 bones in our body in that 64 bones belongs to two upper limbs that is 32 in each what are those 32 bones you have one clavicle one scapula one humerus and one radius which is forearm bone one ulna we have eight carpal bones five metacarpals and 14 phalanges that is because you have only two in thumb three in four fingers when you total you get 32 bones so in one upper limb you have 32 bones in two you have 64 bones you should know the names of all the bones and what you should know about a bone when you are asked in a viva voice first you should know how to hold any bone in anatomical position next you should talk about side determination then comes parts and attachments of your given bone here we are not going to see the normal points about uh, muscle attachment parts all those things but we are going to see some specific point you should know in the bones of upper limb in clavicle apart from its anatomical position muscle attachment side determination you should know about peculiarities which is how it differs from other bones almost you have eight peculiarities uh, please know the peculiarities of clavicle next comes scapula just for now you should know there are three process acromion process coracoid process and spinous process yes definitely apart from this you should know again anatomical position side determination muscle attachments we are just uh, seeing only the points to understand the muscle attachment later then comes our humerus this is a typical long bone unlike clavicle and scapula it is a typical long bone which has upper end lower end and shaft what is the upper end of humerus it has head and uh, this head articulates with the glenoid cavity of scapula to form shoulder joint and this is called surgical neck we will know what is surgical neck in detail later and this constriction between head and shaft is anatomical neck the middle part is shaft this medial prominent part is medial epicondyle this side you have lateral epicondyle near the lateral epicondyle you have capitulum near the medial epicondyle we have trochlea now just know what are the nerves related to the bones of uh, to the humerus 
the nerves related are axillary nerve which winds around the neck of humerus radial nerve in spiral groove in the shaft of humerus ulnar nerve behind the medial epicondyle because of this ulnar nerve we call humerus as funny bone now going on to forearm bones radius it is also a typical long bone which has upper and lower end and shaft upper end has head just know it has radial tuberosity and we have styloid process in the lower end of the bone we are not going in detail just we are seeing the gist of a bone only the main points what is the other forearm bone it is ulna head is present in the upper end of radius while in the ulna head is present in the lower end what is that projection it is olecranon process which articulates with the olecranon fossa of humerus and beneath that we have coronoid process then we also have ulnar tuberosity like radial tuberosity beneath lower down you have styloid process note down in ulna the head is lower down radius head is in the upper end next moving on to carpal bones what are these small pebble like bones they are 8 in number in upper limb you should know the names of all carpal bones i have drawn seven prominent bones and one dot there which is pisiform bone so you have scaphoid lunate triquetral pisiform trapezium trapezoid capitate hamate so about each bone about scaphoid just remember the term avascular necrosis for this you should learn the blood supply of scaphoid in scaphoid fact fracture you should remember avascular necrosis next comes the lunate it is the most common bone to dislocate anteriorly next nothing much about triquetral pisiform you know it is a sesamoid bone when you talk about sesamoid bone you should also tell in which tendon it is present it is present in the tendon of flexor carpi ulnaris next comes your capitate that is the largest carpal bone trapezium trapezoid nothing much yeah trapezium it articulates with your first metacarpals and the last carpal bone is hamate it has a speciality which presents with a hook hook of hamate what attaches to the hook of hamate flexor retinaculum we come to it later now joints of upper limb so medial end of clavicle articulates with manubrium stenae to form sternoclavicular joint lateral and acromioclavicular joint head of humerus with glenoid cavity shoulder joint here you know elbow joint and upper end of radius ulna forms superior radio ulna joint likewise inferior radio ulna joint radius articulates with the carpal bones to form what joint wrist joint you should know all not do not take part in the formation of wrist joint wrist joints otherwise called radio carpal joint and between the carpal bones you have a joint called intercarpal joints intercarpal meaning between carpal bones then the joint between carpals and metacarpals called carpo metacarpal joint first carpal metacarpal joint is important then you have metacarpo phalangeal joint likewise between metacarpals you have intermetacarpal joint and between phalanges you have interphalangeal joint you should also know the type and variety of all the joints we can see in detail in further videos Last video of all the bones of upper limb i haven't discussed anything in detail if you want any specific topic to be discussed detailly please leave it in the comment we can see the muscles of upper limb in the next video thank you